Welcome to Piemonte, home of world famous wines, truffles the size of your fist, stunning landscapes, and now us. During the pandemic, we decided to sell our apartment in Stockholm and move to Italy in search of our dream house. Just a short drive from the Ligurian coast and the buzzing city life of Milan, Langer in Piemonte was the perfect place for us to start our Italian adventure. In December 2021, we got the keys to our abandoned farmhouse and now in early 2022 have begun renovating. Follow our journey and progress as we restore this 100-year-old rustico into our dream home. Again? Yeah. Hi, and welcome to our Italian dream house. So, we finished tiling the bathroom and the next step is to build the um, sink. What do you call it? Commode? Yeah, I, get, I don't know what the yes, English word is. Say, the commode for the bathroom. Um, we got one from IKEA in the cycle Gomorron, which we will pimp with some other handles. We can have a different top on, um, different legs. So technically the structure is IKEA and then hopefully you can't tell that it is. Um, and I've been challenged because the Swedes, we always brag about how good and quick we are at assembling IKEA furniture. But we pretty much <laughs> learned that in school. So I've been challenged to see how long it will take <laughs> to assemble this thing. And I'm thinking it's gonna be a good treat. <laughs> Started to rain on us. So something cool that has happened is that the electricians have been and they've started wiring the whole of the upstairs and they're pretty close to finishing actually. Um, they've been here one and a half days and they just kind of ripped through two guys laying cables, pulling tubes through the walls, drilling, cutting and yeah they've made amazing progress and it feels like an amazing step in the right direction. So that's cool. Uh, let's have a little look at what they've done. So they've been up in the attic, up in the loft, pulling tubing through, putting in light switches, running cables for sockets. And this is all the master bedroom. Um, 
So we've been getting a lot of questions coming through on Instagram and in the comments. So we thought we would do an official Q and A to finish up this video. And we put out on Instagram asking for specific questions. So we're gonna answer those now. Great. You've got the list there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one person is asking if we have gas and what our expected yearly cost for the gas is. Oh, good question. Yeah, so we are take, uh, installing gas. Uh, we're gonna have a gas boiler, so we're gonna use gas for um, heating. heating. Yeah, both heating water and, and heating. Radiators. Yeah. yeah, we're not putting it in the kitchen for cooking, but it will be used. Um, I wasn't very happy <laughs> about this, to be honest. I don't know if that's a Scandinavian thing. We don't actually use gas in Sweden. So I don't like the idea of having it at home. And also now with the current situation with Russia, I think the prices are gonna go up even more. But it seems like in our area, it's what people use. So we were strongly recommended by our uh, plumber and our geometer to put gas in. Yeah, it's, the, it's definitely the standard in Italy. Um, for heating and cooking, they have gas both in the kitchen and mm. for boilers. Um, yeah, so we'll start with the gas boiler and maybe we phase it out in the future. Maybe we can look into other options. Solar. But um, for now, with the time frame we have and the budget, it's going to be gas. Yeah, uh, so estimated yearly cost, high. <laughs> yeah, um, that's for sure. Um, we're actually going to install some wood burning stoves to offset the heating bill a little yeah. bit. So we don't have to run the heating the whole time, but for heating water, it's going to be our only option. So yeah. that's uh, where we, the cost will be. We can compare it. We were renting an apartment uh, this winter up in Vignale Monferrato, and we heated up two rooms yeah. and we were barely there. We turned the heating up when we left. We were also away traveling a lot and the gas bill was still about 200 euros per month. Yeah, just under Yeah, just for a new, kind of newly renovated small apartment. So I would imagine that the gas bill for the house would be at least five, six hundred euros per month. And that's why we want yeah. to... Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, it could be. Worst case scenario, that I think it could be 500 yeah. euros a month. Best yeah. case, it could be somewhere around two, three hundred if we're pretty careful. Yeah. So I we'll mean, see. we're getting used to not showering that often now, so, or showering yeah. in cold, cold water. Cold showers. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, next question. Yes. Uh, update regarding the bonuses. Hmm. Yes. That is an interesting one. It's a sore subject still. It's a very sore subject. So technically, since the last video, we don't really have any new information. Uh, we were in contact with a geometra who thinks that it won't be any news this until... Month. No. No. Um, the thing with the renovation bonuses in Italy, like the 50% or the super bonus, it's kind of used a lot in politics. Um, and they seem to with like extend the bonuses and the next day they are suspending them So it seems like they don't really know what to do with them. Yeah, we should say that since we started the process We were obviously a little bit Skeptical of the bonus not being Italian, but it kept getting extended and being opened up for non-residents through the bank credit scheme Yeah, so that's kind of why we ended up relying on it a bit um, It's not that we were being naive. It's just that everything was telling we us that we were eligible for it. We had started the process. The bank had accepted us yeah. um, passing the credits to them. So, yeah, so we got a lot of comments on uh, YouTube sort of saying it was a bit naive um, and that you should never rely on government schemes. And I agree, but we had had all of the signs that we were, yeah, we we were going to get it. it. So it's... It came yeah. as a bit of a shock. Yeah, and it's not just us who ended up in this situation. I was reading the other day in the Italian news that it was like over 100,000 Italian businesses are risking bankruptcy because of this. It's put a lot of Italian and foreign families in a lot of financial trouble because people have already started the work. So yes. it seems like from what we hear, they say that they're going to have to open it up somehow, yes. at least for the people who have already started the work. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a big problem because a lot of um, construction companies have taken on the credit from their clients, and now they're not eligible. So they've taken the cost for yeah, their clients. They don't get the money from the no. bank either. So there, there's a big problem with companies risking bankruptcy. So there looks like there will be a solution coming. Yeah. I don't know if we'll be eligible for it as um, second, second, uh, second casa. the casa. So yeah. it's not our first residence. So we'll see. Yeah. 
Um, but fingers crossed that we can get back in the scheme and yeah. it will help us. Because what we're going to do now, since technically our renovation costs just went up, double. like double, uh, we actually can't afford to do the stable building right now. Yeah, so, so we'll prioritize the main house. Yeah. Um, just the bare, bare minimum, minimum. Just to get it livable and also potentially rentable. So then we can make an income and start saving up to complete the stable part of the building too yeah also since we don't have a mortgage obviously we can't go to the bank and just ask them to increase the mortgage to release more money no. um the money we have is, is very much <laughs> what we have yeah yeah what's in our bank account is what we have to work with yes so next question yes um which room will you do next um i think this is multiple rooms it's going to be upstairs yeah. Um, so we have the plastering company coming in last week of June. So in a week or so, maybe mm -hmm. 10 days. Mm -hmm. And we are going to try and get the upstairs completely livable. Um, so our actual master bedroom, we're hoping to get completely plastered and then we can start building our ensuite bathroom and walk-in closet. Hey. So that's the next one. And then... It's hard to say, actually, as well, because lots is going to happen at, at once. So yeah, right but... now we are waiting for the plumber to come in and put all the pipes. And before he's done that, the electricians can't finish, and the new construction company, company. can't like pour the cement or do the floors. Exactly. So we're waiting on a lot of the things plumber. to fall into place. Yeah. But when it does, it should all happen at once. It will be. Yes. Lots happening and yeah. exciting. So at that's least good. that's what they keep telling us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen that yet, but I'm very excited to see it. Yeah, true. When it happens. Fingers crossed. Um, what's been the biggest unexpected challenge so far? Um, I don't know if it was unexpected, but I think the biggest challenge has been the bureaucracy. Or it's mm. at least been the biggest thing that slowed us down. Mm. So the planning permissions process, um, UNESCO right. pausing the application. Um, because they needed more information. Yeah. These types of things have been the biggest, how do you say, hurdle, mm. or like blocking um, the bottleneck on the process. Mm. Um, but the biggest challenge has probably been a lot of the physical work. Uh, for I me, think. it's definitely the financial part now because I am very good. I never put myself in financial trouble. I always have very good pay on or money and budgeting and like nothing is mm. ever really a surprise to me when it comes to money and then now we went from being bang on budget we like we were in really good face to like shit we might have to borrow money from our parents to survive this yeah it's a challenge but it's nothing we can do about it so we have to just adapt and find a solution yes so uh, is the house going to be for just you or will you have a rental unit? It's going to be a bit of both. So the plan mm. was that the stable part of the building would be a rental unit or um, also guest accommodation when we have friends and family staying. And then the main house was going to be for us um, and then potentially one or two weeks rental a year, the whole thing. Mm. Um, but right now with the delays on the stable parts, I think we'll have to reassess and maybe the main house we will look into renting some weeks in yes. September and October. And that was also the plan because yeah. we like to travel a lot. So we are building the house and adapting the house to a very, um, we say Scandinavian standard because there's a lot of Scandinavians uh, visiting our area. Um, so we have planned to rent it out. Yeah, exactly. Um, yes. So it's fun functional for people. Rental unit. Per se, what's yeah, the that would be, yeah, yeah, exactly. We're planning so, on renting that out nightly. Yeah. But you never know if the yeah. bonus comes through. Like we'll have two perfectly fine rental units by the end of the summer. Yeah, we will. Is Italy cheaper or more expensive than Greece or Portugal to do this kind of project? It's a good question. No idea. No idea either. From having watched other channels on YouTube, mm. I would say that potentially Portugal is cheaper than Italy, mm. um, it seems to be. Um, but also the people that I've watched in Portugal are doing way more work themselves than we intend mm. to in the long run. So they're obviously saving costs that way. Greece, 
I have no idea. Yeah. I've never seen anything about Greece. But if any one of you who are watching are doing a similar project in Greece or Portugal, please write in the comments um, yeah. what your thoughts are. And if you're making this. videos, leave a link so people yeah. can follow your journey too. Yeah. Are you buying most of your material locally? Um, yes. Yeah, we're trying so. to. Yeah. yeah. In the beginning, we started and we were like, oh, we're just going to go to like the big building shops like Leroy Milan that we know. And then it just didn't feel right. No. A lot yeah. of the tools and things we have been buying from the bigger stores. Um, and Amazon. Yeah, because you just save so much money. And yep. unfortunately, we are on a tight budget. So that's out of our control. We yeah. have to take the cheapest option. But we've regards to materials we've been buying a lot more at our local um builders merchants yep. and there's a guy there who speaks english he's really useful really helpful because <laughs> he has a better experience than i do because yeah. when i've been coming into that shop on my own they don't want to sell me anything because i imagine they don't think that women in my age should be doing any kind of building projects so um it's a bit of a cultural difference yeah <laughs> Yeah. Which I haven't taken so well. No. No. But yes, we, we use that store. Uh, yeah. All our um, contractors are local. Yep. Our windows are being handmade locally. Yep. From wood as yep. well, which is nice. Um, uh, we're going to get a marble countertop locally. locally. Yeah. Um, the only yeah. thing, yeah, we haven't bought, like our tiles we bought from bigger yeah, stores. But, but that was but, literally a question about budget. If also, I could afford to buy local tiles, I would have. Yeah, and we have to say they are Italian made. Yeah, um, from Pascal. And they, yeah, is it Bologna or? Mm, yeah. Or somewhere bit, just a, in a Tuscany. South. Further yeah. south. So they come from Tuscany, yeah. which is still within Italy, which is yes. nice. We're not buying things. Because a lot of people buy Spanish tiles because they're yeah. a little bit cheaper and similar look. But yes. we have stuck to Italian. Yes. Feels good. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. It's a good good balance of local and Yes. Affordable. And Italians are really good at like the local economy in general. Like they're great at supporting local stores and yeah. the contractors. Exactly. In, it's very admirable. Yeah. In last week's video you may remember Davida the Tyler one of his most important questions to us was where we're buying our groceries and yeah. making sure that we understand that we can get everything within the village yes. and that we don't have to go to the big supermarkets yeah. our issue there is that we do like to eat quite a lot of Asian food <laughs> which is not readily available no no so, so then we have to go to the bigger uh, supermarkets yeah. to get that but otherwise we are trying to stay local and help the local economy yeah absolutely uh, are you having a custom-made kitchen built? Ah, I wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. No, unfortunately. Custom-made, built by me, with some help from IKEA. Yeah. Yeah, not it's definitely local. not custom-made. Unfortunately, local. we can't afford that. But we are... What are we doing? We're pimping um, an IKEA kitchen. So yes. we're going to repaint the fronts into a colour of our choice. Yep. Um, put new handles. Yep. Put our own work bench or work surface, yes. a marble one we're going to get um, made. We have all Bosch appliances that we're putting in. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. So no, it's no, not custom, no. but it's customized. Yeah. Let's say. And I actually really like the IKEA kitchens because I think that there's so much good storage opportunity and you can really modify it the way that you want. So you can literally just buy the skeleton and then turn it into your own style. And that's yeah. what we did in Stockholm and that kitchen was so great. Yeah, it's true. The uh, the cabinets and drawer systems that they have and all the storage yeah, is great. Yeah, so convenient. So, yeah, it was a big money saver and it's very functional. Yes. So that's good. Are you still going to do a lot of work yourself? It seems like you have slowed down a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, we have slowed down for sure. Um, we're at the stage in the project where the contractors have to come in to do their part mm. um, the bits we're not allowed to do so all the electrical the plumbing and the structural work yeah um, which is current phase of the building project basically yeah. once that's done then we can come back in 
We're not really sure how much we're going to take on. Depends on budget, of course, but there's going to be bits of plastering to do, yeah, decorating. I think now we'd reach a stage like before with the bonus. We were like, oh, if something is just costing us maybe a grand, then we might as well leave it to the builders because it's technically just going to cost us 500. And now we are have to reassess that and like every cost. Oh, every cost has cut. to be assessed, yeah. yeah. So we might sure. start tearing down the facade on our own because yeah. that's, for example, something that saves sure. 2,700 euros. Yeah, and we're also going to have a attempt at doing the floor tiles ourselves. These types mm -hmm. of things we're going to try. I think we'll bring in Davide for some extra help. Of course. Though. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Can't do it without him now. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's those types of projects we will take on ourselves, yeah. all the decorating um, and finishing. But the, yeah, the structural, electrical and plumbing, we're not touching. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening right now mm. in the house. Next one. How do you find working with Italians? This is a bit of like a sensitive subject to me and I'm gonna have a small like rate, rant. rant now. We get a lot of comments on things like when something doesn't go away that is like oh it's so typical Italians or Italians are lazy and like oh you should expect this. I don't know. I think this is <laughs> I think in every country you are, uh, you will experience like difficulties when you work with, with contractors uh, and especially contractors who have several different projects on at the same time. Uh, when we were renovating our apartment in Stockholm, we ended up in massive trouble with our plumbers who went bankrupt and didn't contact us and we, you yeah. know, Half took our sorry. money. We had other contractors who like broke our floor and tiled wrong so i really don't think that this is typical for italy no it can happen anywhere and, and italians are not more lazy than anyone else like everyone we've been working no. with have been super super yeah when good. they're working they've been working really hard yeah um otherwise yeah everyone are our, super friendly yeah. they are accommodating or or Italian, like they're really trying yeah. to explain so we understand. They're working with Google Translate on WhatsApp so that we can communicate yes. well. And we have exceptionally different expectations to their usual client coming. Yeah. Like we're very fussy and needy compared to yeah. a lot of Italians. Because we, for example, plumbers are often given the. Um, the right or yeah, they the, can choose to choose they want, yeah. where the toilet like how the bathrooms are laid out you know mm -hmm. a client says i need a new bathroom and they and i'm like and if that's it. not like on the millimeter centered on that wall you know we're gonna have to redo it from the beginning yeah so we're quite demanding yeah um and they've been very accommodating to yeah. all our demands so yeah. far um so i mean so i can good. i can imagine that like it depends on what like wherever you are in the world like the working culture will be different so it might work differently in southern Italy, for example, mm. to what it does in the north. We only have experience from the north, but everything is going, except for the Muratore, but you mm. know, otherwise everything's been going super well. Like yeah. they're super organized. Everything is done by the book. Yep. Um, so I'm really not accepting when people are Talking badly. Talking badly about the Italian yeah. workforce, because I think that's unfair and you will find... Yeah, or it's certainly not our experience. No. So we can't speak to that. No. I have more bad experience with Swedish workers than I have with Italian. Yeah. Should we do a little full update on the Muratore? Because a lot yeah. of people are... Wanting to know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And we wish we could give a good answer. Yeah. So what has happened is our... Geometra, who is in charge of our project management and finding contractors for us. He has found a new company which will take on the project yep. um, but and this... they are able to do it end of June, beginning of July. Yep. So that's good. So we don't have a huge wait for someone to come in. But the issue is that we're not sure what's happening with our payment to the old moratorium. So, so basically... Yeah, because we get we a lot of questions about that. Yeah. So it's not that we paid someone in advance, but his total quote for the work was about 11,000. And since he had started um, some of the structural work and had a lot of also cost for materials, he actually let us choose how big percentage. Yeah. And we said 30% feels fair, because also we wanted to motivate him that, you know, we are yeah. paying him quickly. Um, so yeah. what we are hoping for now is that we're going to be able to get 
about 2000 years back from him. Yeah. And that's money that we really need. Um, yeah, so basically we paid him 30%, so we paid him just over 3000 mm. um, And the work he did was worth 2000 But we actually had to helped do a him. Lot of yeah, we actually <laughs> helped him with a lot of the work, so we think it's unfair that we pay the full 2000 when we had to do a day. If we had to do a full day of yeah. clearing out the wall, and also he had left a piece of wall in the middle yeah. of the room to, to take down. Yeah, so. so this is where the dispute begins. Yeah. Um, but we're pretty assured from our geometra that we will be getting at least a thousand back yeah. because he has only done 2,000 euros worth of work. But he doesn't seem to be in a hurry with no, us but, to give us the money back. Yeah, but that's by the by. The, the thing is that all the quotes that we've got for the work, they go through the commune. The commune has to sign off that the worker is has a certificate mm. that he can come and do the work from us. So they know what he's done and what he hasn't, how much mm. he's been paid. So. Yeah. It looks like it will be um, mediated at some point, but we're not sure when. Yes. Yeah. But I'm really happy that we found, or that Andrea found us a new Muratore who would come in with five guys. They seem to be like super pumped to, to get the work started and, yeah. and finish it. So Yeah, for um, sure. And they also will be responsible for the plastering. So that's great. Yes. So they basically are going to just yeah. tear through the house, get it all done. Yes. This was actually all of the questions yeah. I had. Is there anything you want to add? Any brilliant question on your own mind? I don't think so. I think it's been quite a long video already, so yeah. should wrap it up. And next week will be... Absent. More, yeah, it might not be a video next week. No. But the following week we'll be back at the house and we'll be seeing what progress has been made by the electricians and plumbers and everybody else. So fingers crossed. Who we need to chase that. Yeah, fingers crossed something will be happening. Yes. Cool. cool. Well, thank you so much for watching and please do consider liking and subscribing, giving the notification bell a ping because it really does help us out. And you follow us on Instagram under our Italian dream house. And we'll see you next time.